Hello, my name is Corey Gill. You can find me on Twitter at Corey Gill. And today I'm going to be talking about the opening range breakout or ORB and doing some analysis of the strategy over a few different symbols using Tableau. The opening range breakout strategy is a fairly simple strategy where you take the opening bar of the time at the time you're choosing and that high low range defines your opening range and above the range you go long and below the range you go short. A lot of people use three units so that you can scale out as price moves in the direction that you like. So say you go long, you might sell one at target one. Price continues to rise, sell one at target two. The third position or your runner you would hold till the end of the day or until stopped out. And you get stopped out two ways. You get stopped out by the end of the day or if the price reverses and goes to the other side of the opening range, at which time you would close all your positions and initiate a new position in the opposite direction using three units again. And this presentation is going to take an in-depth look at all the different ways you can play the opening range breakout strategy and the profitability of each. For this study, I had four years worth of one minute data that I analyzed using a PowerShell script that I wrote that gave output similar to what you see on the screen where for each trade, you can see that we would uh, go short, buy to close, uh, reverse, go long, uh, close out after a given number of uh, stop outs in a given day. And that generated what you see on the right side, this what I call gain list where you can see for each trade the type of trade it was and the amount of the gain or loss for that trade. This is the data that we'll be analyzing in Tableau. Okay, we have all our data imported into Tableau. Don't let this screen overwhelm you. We're going to go into each one of these panes in, in detail here. I just wanted to call out all the things we're going to look at, like the overall gains each strategy produces and which ones are which. And you can see here that uh, we've imported 1,944 different strategies, permutations of the ORB strategy across nine symbols uh, for a total of 9.1 million trades uh, in total. We're going to look uh, at the gains by the number of runners. Uh, we're going to analyze one and two runner scenarios and two different time frames like 6.30 a.m. and 7.45. We're going to look at nine symbols right here, the silver, NASDAQ, crude, gold, the yen, ES, ZB, the bonds, two years, the YM, and RTY, which I did not have all four years of data for. We're going to look at gains by symbol. We're going to look at gains just focusing on ones that have one runner position, which is what normally people are going to do. We're going to look at it by uh, weekday. We're going to look at it by month. So without any further ado, let's dive right into the next worksheet. Now we're looking at the ORB, ORB gains by symbol sorted by the total returns over the four year period. And you can see here that silver was the top performer, followed by the NQ, followed by CL, followed by GC, the yen, and down here is ES, which is the most popular symbol, I think, for people to do trading on, but yet it's number one, two, three, four, five, six in our list. We're going to dive into this a little bit more detail to see why ES only gives 200,000 in gains when silver over the same time period yields 300,000. Very interesting and worth a deeper look. This is the same chart as before, except I've broken out the gains by time, 6.30 and 7.45, and by number of runners, one runner and two runners. And you can see for each, using two runners always yields better results than using just one runner. Now this is uh, this would mean you're doing a four unit position size, which is probably a bit much for a lot of people so the remainder of the presentation is going to focus on one runner um, but it's worth noting that uh, two runners uh, can boost your gains with this strategy here we are looking at the ORB strategy across all the symbols where I've selected just the top four performing permutations 
of the strategy applied to each symbol. And you can see here with two runners, uh, something interesting that uh, CL is uh, head of GC in return in terms of gains. And if we look at just one runner only, you can see that actually GC gets ahead of CL with, with one runner, uh, while the other symbols remain in the same ordering, just the magnitude is different. Uh, one thing to call out here is this ES strategy with uh, 16 by 40 ticks, which is 4 by 10 points, which I believe is the most popular approach to the ORB strategy for ES. However, as I'm showing here, there are three additional strategies that give higher gains for ES, 8 by 40, 16 by 48, and 8 by 48. Uh, something interesting to call out. So let's take a different view of the top four gains by symbol. On this chart, I'm showing a running total of the gains over the four years. And again, I'll call out, I don't have the full four years of data from uh, the Russell. So we can focus on the remainder here as a uh, apples to apples comparison. And again, we're um, same, same kind of charts as before, SI. Uh, is on top uh, by then by NQ and we can see gold is in here followed by CL and then finally uh, ES shows up uh, down here so some things I noticed on this chart were the the slope of the lines and where the gains came in and if we look here at ES uh, this ES line uh, kind of went flat for a while then had a big move up uh, meanwhile, some other charts just seem to show uh, steady gains like bonds. Uh, bonds, I think, is a really interesting symbol to play the ORB strategy on as it has a nice predictable line and uh, uh, looks like a lot less uh, drawdowns. But over time, uh, we definitely see here is silver is a clear uh, winner going ahead of all the other symbols. <clears throat> so let's just take a peek at silver. Uh, so silver by itself, we have the four strategies, and they all four uh, seem to be pretty close to each other. So whichever one you pick seems to be uh, the same, whether you're uh, 30, 30 by 90, 30 by 80, 26 by 90, 26 by 80, uh, all with three stopouts. Um, let me see that here, uh, three stopouts, and we do move stops to break even after uh, target one. Um, this is the best performing strategy. Uh, let's look at ES. Uh, ES, like I said, had a, a decent start. We gave back a little bit. Um, uh, nice gains, a good ramp up, and ends up with uh, uh, still profits, uh, still profitable. And if you look at the best performing ES strategy, uh, 8 by 48, although the most popular is going to be the 16 by 40. And again, this is in ticks, so this is 4 by 10 points. Uh, at the end of four years, uh, with the strategy applied, with the rules outlined before, uh, $136,000, uh, not bad. Uh, let's take a look at everything again. Um, yeah, so this is another place to, to look at some more um, uh, in just more detail and uh, just see what questions we can ask of these numbers. Here's another view of the orb strategy uh, with running total gains by symbol and number of runners. And we also have an option to move stops to break even after target one, uh, which has an interesting uh, side note here. Uh, let's take a look at that first. Now let's look at the strategies where we do not move the target, uh, the stop to break even rather after target one. And there's only two that fall into this category. Uh, the first is the uh, yen strategy uh, with a 12 by 48 tick uh, target one, target two. Uh, starting at 7.45 a.m. and the RTY uh, starting at 6.30 a.m. with 25 by 130 ticks as, as its targets. Um, so let's look at the, uh, the remainder of these. Uh, this is with all runners, uh, two and one runners, and we can see uh, for silver, the top silver with two runners and the top silver with one runner, again, Two, two runners gives you additional gains, uh, 226,000 versus 300,000 if you did a second runner. Uh, since most people don't operate that way, let's just focus on the strategies that are permutation with just one runner 
and we can see all these results here and the ordering is uh, silver, NQ, gold, crude. And here's ES down here. And again, the eight by 48 strategy yielded the best number and that most popular uh, 10 by 40 uh, strategies are not far behind. Um, but this gives you a view of the differences and what we can glean out of these charts. And again, we can look at the slope and profile of where the gains were made uh, especially with like ES with that big ramp up here. Uh, meanwhile, if we look at the yen, uh, nice steady growth over time. Uh, maybe it's more predictable. Uh, this is something to investigate. Gold seems to be pretty predictable. Uh, not a lot of moves up and down relative to some of the other symbols. Uh, si silver ends up on top. Uh, YM uh, seems to be a laggard across all the strategies. Um, not sure why yet. We need to dig into that some more. Um, but this is a look at your running total gains by symbol and number of runners. I found this chart pretty interesting where I rank the gains by the weekday and sort of the best gains for each day of the week uh, with Ruth rank. So this way we can see that uh, on Monday, NQ does the best on Monday. Uh, doesn't it does the worst on Tuesdays uh, does the best on Wednesdays it's lower middle on Thursday and solidly in the middle on Friday uh, let's take a look at these uh, by highlighting some rows here um, silver uh, silver performs best on Thursday and Fridays relative to all the other symbols uh, NQ we covered that by kind of just glancing at things earlier gold uh, gold is the number two performer on Monday, the best performer on Tuesday, the middle on Wednesday, the lower bottom here. Uh, that's actually the bottom since we didn't have the full data for RTY. It's the bottom on Thursday and number two on Friday. Uh, similar for crude, uh, kind of middle of the road here. ES. ES is fourth. Uh, sixth, second, fourth, fifth. Um, so Clearly, ES is not the best performing over time, although uh, maybe these gains are something you're you're looking for. Um, there's nothing to discern by the, the, the day a week here, to, uh, too much on that one. Uh, YM, we talked about before, was a laggard uh, bonds uh, at the lower end, uh, but yet you have a steadier line on bonds, recall, um, but lower gains. So depending on your risk profile, uh, maybe this is something you do, but clearly, uh, the standouts are uh, what we learned about ES and, and Q. So maybe you, uh, maybe a strategy is uh, doing NQ on two, Monday, do nothing on Tuesday, trade uh, NQ on Wednesday, and then do silver Thursday and Friday using the ORB strategy. Just something to consider. Let's take a look at it by month. This is a, uh, similar to the previous chart. And again, if we look at it by... Uh, ranked by uh, the month January. NQ seems to have the best Januaries. Uh, these four uh, do well in February. Notice there's a loss in gold in January, a loss in gold in June. Uh, ES doesn't seem to do well in May with this strategy. Uh, let's kind of highlight some of these to see where they end up. Uh, here's a look at CL. We can highlight ES. Uh, ES's best months are uh, June and July. Uh, not a bad December. Uh, gold. Uh, look at gold. Doesn't like just January. Uh, does well in February, April. August in gold seems to be a winner. as followed by silver as well. And let's put silver on here compared to it. Well, uh, here in August, uh, gold outperforming silver over four years. So it's only four data points. And it reverses. And November, silver outperforms gold with the ORB strategy. And in December... Silver still showing strong, and December is really a stinker here. Uh, again, this is just some of the things we can do with Tableau and how we can slice and dice this data and try to uh, make some better guesses about uh, ways to improve the ORB strategy. I made this worksheet to look at the ORB gains with one runner by symbol and allowing us to uh, just see where some different strategies fall out. The label I put on here uh, calls out the number of ticks for the strategy. Um, and we can use the tooltip to give us the additional details of, uh, for example, whether the strategy starts at 745 
this one, the one of the best performing ones, actually starts at 6.30. Uh, so these are 6.30, these are 7.45. Um, and we can do this for any symbol. We can look at ES. And number four, as we've uh, called out before, is our, our most popular one that I think people start out with is uh, 4 by 10. Uh, it's not bad. It's in the very top end of the range we have. Um, but we'll call out also that the better performing strategy is the one that starts at 745 versus uh, starting at uh, 630 when the market opens on the, the West Coast here. Um, we could also break this out and look at the time differences between the two and see how that performs for ES. Uh, I thought this was an interesting way. Uh, this gold, I call this out just because these these look pretty good here and similar. Um, there's some big drop-offs. I think the way I ran the, the calculations, uh, we're not getting a very smooth line, so clearly I, I might have to do some different work here uh, to get more data so it looks like a smoother chart, something like NQ, that you kind of expect that as the permutations of these strategies uh, move, things just drop off more slowly. Uh, let's do something in a real time here and see if this works. I haven't tried this. Let's take ES and let's do the uh, start time and add that to color. Uh, and see what happens here. So here we can see we've added the start time. So 6.30 start times are in blue and 7.40 start times, 7.45 start times are in the gold. So our best performing ES strategy starting at 6.30 is uh, 12 by 44. So that's going to be uh, 3 by 11 points. Uh, meanwhile, everything else starting at 7.45 yields a lot better results. So maybe you don't need to uh, be so quick to start the ORB strategy on the opening range at 630 and maybe starting at 745 uh, might actually give you a little less churn and higher results. Again, this is uh, another way we can slice and dice data with Tableau and discover things that maybe we didn't know before. I found this pretty interesting and this is uh, another area where I'm going to spend a little bit more time. I hope you enjoyed this video of the opening range breakout strategy using Tableau to analyze different permutations of the ORB strategy across different symbols and different ways we can slice and dice data. You can reach me on Twitter at Corey Gill. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and tell your friends.